Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Cardboard for Mars. I'm Nate, and with me is Nima. And What's up, guys? Yeah, today we're going to continue our series on uh, card grades for Terraforming Mars. And uh, Nima, do you want to introduce us to the grading scale? Yeah, excited, man. So last time we kind of went over what like A through F kind of meant. So I'll go through them a little quicker this time, and we'll try to do this every time a little uh, quickly. But so we have A through F, like I said, A is kind of the best cards in the game, basically. Uh, these are, we call them game breaking and you should rarely pass them. Something, an example of this would be maybe like AI Central. Um, B, these cards, we you usually wanna play them. They're a lot better than standard projects typically. Uh, an example here might be Acquired Company. Uh, letter grade C, you want, sometimes you wanna play these they're not necessarily great cards or bad cards, and they're probably a little bit better than a standard project. Um, an example we'll use here is adaptation technology, kind of, you know, situational. Um, letter grade D, you rarely want to play these. There's a lot of cost to get them down, and they're highly situational. Um, adaptive Lichen might be a card to consider in this category. And then letter grade F, these are the worst cards in the game. You basically never want to play them. Um, and this might be something like Underground Detonations or maybe Black Polar Dust for that matter. Yeah, you only want to play those if it's like a stipulation draft where you're trying to entertain people. <laughs> like if you're handicapping yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, um, we, we made it through the A's, Nima, so now we're getting to okay. getting through our B's. Uh, uh. We're going to start off with Beam from Athorium Asteroid. What is that one? Okay. Doing? So Beam from Athorium Asteroid costs 32, and it also requires that you have a Jovian tag played already. It has three tags, a uh, Jovian, Space, and a Power tag. It gives you three heat production and three power production, and it also just co uh, gives you a point. So this is a big card, Nate. What's going on here? Yeah, this is a big card. So this is kind of your classic uh, expensive uh, space titanium type of card and has a pretty big effect. I mean, getting three heat and three energy is, is good. It also has a point on the card. Um, this is, I have to say, this is one of my least favorite uh, Jupiter sort of space tag type of cards. The effect is good, um, you know, particularly if you can play it early because um, energy can be hard to get in the early part of the game and there are a lot of really powerful energy uh expenditure cards you know like that require energy yeah. um, and this can be a good setup for those but man 32 is expensive and you need a jupiter tag even to consider playing it right yeah so like it's hard it's incredibly expensive it's hard to get down on top of it being expensive but like so what i keep thinking from this is is it worth it once you've got it down? And I'm, I don't know, like I don't necessarily think the production is just stellar by itself. Um, like the three heat is pretty good. Um, I don't know, like powers generally, it's just, you, you, you want power a lot, don't you? Like, so maybe this is better the more I'm talking through it. Yeah, I mean, I think that like, okay, so compare this card to to giant space mirror okay yeah. i'm pretty i'm pretty sure space mirror costs 17 it's somewhere in that range and it gives you three power so this card basically costs another 15 and for that extra 15 you get three heat production a jupiter tag and a point that's pretty good but the problem is just that this card costs so much money early in the game right like if this if this card Cost like 25 and you shaved an energy and a power and a, and a heat production and you you went with this more towards the middle portion of the game I think it would be much better the problem is these like turn one two three and four plays are just so critical and and I feel like a lot of the value of this card is in the Jupiter tag and the point and that just makes it not great in the beginning hmm that's interesting well I mean, why, like, I, I probably agree with that, but what, what would you say, like, playing it in mid-game or late-game or something like that? Well, and so the problem with playing it 
this particular card mid and late game is that there are just usually better cards to score you points. And by that point in the game, you usually have those cards because you've had time to get them in the draft and sort of save them up for when you want to play them, right? So, like, I feel like the time that you play Beam is when you're starting off with Saturn Systems or or you have an early Jupiter tag and you don't yeah. really have a lot else going on. And so you just like, okay, well, I'm going to dump all my money into this thing. And, I mean, it's good if you play it early because it's almost a heat bump every turn. Um, you know, so it's, it's not like an inefficient card. It's just that the way that it's costed makes it awkward to play it early, which is when it's best. And so I think it, it really kind of tails off. You know, I th yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I mean... I think sure. it's basically like okay in some situations, but really not that great. Um, I, I think I would agree with that. Like, I, I think this is a decent mid-game card. Um, there's plenty of situations, and you're in the middle of the game, and the temperature track hasn't gone up that much, so this is still pretty good. Um, but yeah, this is this is a very Saturn Systems card. Um, that is by far the easiest way to get it down, and you already start with a Jovian tag as them. So, so what are you going to give it, Nima? What are you What are you thinking here? Um, I would probably give it a C. I'm going D plus, um, but I I would also I would also I could see C minus. Um, you know, I just the problem is like another one of these cards where. Just you know, it's a pro. You know, like just on its yeah. face, it's kind of a C. But but the way that it gets played, like I just rarely play it, which means I think that it's more functionally a D. That's fair enough. I I I would be fine with the C minus myself. Um, yeah, I mean sometimes sometimes played but replaceable. That seems like to me like pretty right on. All right, you ready for the next one? Yeah, let's do it. All right, big asteroid. Uh, big Asteroid, 27 credits, space tag, event. Um, it's got a super rad picture. <laughs> yeah. um, and it gives you two heat bumps. You get four titanium back, and you get to destroy four plants from another player. Yeah, this is a fun one. Um, this So we, we did Asteroid last time, right? Now it's, it's Big Brother. Uh, yeah, it's, this is basically a... <laughs> It's a souped up asteroid, right? It's just like it's one more power. I mean, one more heat bump and two more titanium, if I remember correctly, and then one more plant uh, burned. Um, okay, so like, I think this is a pretty good card. Like, it's mainly because of the the, the titanium it gives you back. So like, if asteroid was a kind of souped up standard project this is like a super standard project um i think it, you know i like just like asteroid though i don't you know this isn't gonna this, this isn't gonna swing anything hugely it's not like a game breaking card or anything like that but it's i think it's pretty decent yeah i like your i mean i think your analysis is basically right on i mean it's it's just a it's like an asteroid times two <laughs> i mean yeah. literally, literally is it's like um, and, and a lot of the analysis that we gave for Asteroid um, applies here too. If you have some of the space discounts, um, if somebody has plants that you want to slow down, if you have media group or um, you know optimal arrow breaking or something like that, um, yeah, it just gets really good. Um, you know, I do think that Asteroid is, I think, a little better in the sense that Mm. Um, because it's cheaper, if you do have discounts, those discounts represent a higher proportion of the cost of the card. So, like, if Asteroid costs 13 and you've got Arrow Breaking and Media Group, now you're playing this thing for 7, um, that's that's a steeper discount than you would get on Big Asteroid, which costs twice as much as Asteroid to begin with. So, on the other hand, the effects are all doubled in Big Asteroid. I mean, this card's just solid. I mean, it's it's really good. And when you don't want it, it's not a big deal passing it to somebody else. Um, I like this card. I think it's good. Yeah, I do too. Um, so Asteroid, normal Asteroid costs 14, gives you two Titanium back. So like, 
essentially if you have no bonuses the titan with the titanium that makes it so the card the card essentially costs eight right right so then this on its own makes it so the card costs what 15 um yeah so like you're you're basically talking seven an extra seven for the cost of another uh, heat bump, so it's actually one cheaper than the the normal asteroid. So it's like, yeah, it's basically a, it's basically asteroid times two. <laughs> yeah, it's just asteroid times two. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, like... it is worth noting that there are a few cards in the game, like this one and Demos Down, that do give you some control over the heat tracker, and this puts you in a good position to get the ocean unlock bonus. Um, and also any of the other bonuses that are on that track. So that is additional value on big asteroid. And it's it's obviously considerably better than asteroid because having two bumps on a single card means you can yeah. bump the heat three times in, in a single um, action round for right. yourself. Yeah, that's a good point. Like that gets you into the heat bumps. Yeah, those bonuses, like you're saying. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. I think big so, asteroid is just a solid B. I think we gave asteroid a B and I think big asteroid is also just a B. Yeah, that's kind of what I think too. I might go, I maybe go B plus, but I I was thinking B as well. Yeah, looks okay. like everyone in chat saying B as well. Cool. All right, you ready for the next one? Yeah, let's do it. All right, biomass combustors. Okay, what is this biomass doing? combustors. So uh, this only costs four. It requires six percent oxygen. Uh, there's a power tag and a building tag. Um, so you can decrease any plant production, anyone's plant production by one and increase your energy production by two. There is a minus one point cost to it as well, though. So yeah, this is, I, I, I'll guess I'll reserve what I'm going to say, but go ahead, Nate. What do you think? Well, I actually think this card would be really good if it weren't for the global requirement here of 6% oxygen. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like if, if you... If you look at this card and what it does, it's pretty powerful. I mean, it gives you a cheap building tag. It gives you two energy for four, which is obviously insanely good. And it hacks somebody's plant production. I mean, all of that together is, is very good. It does yeah. come at a negative one point, but that's like, you know, whatever. Most games don't come down to one point. The problem is most of these, most of the value in this card would would need to be accessible early for it to be completely unlocked so imagine if you just got rid of this global requirement you would play this card every single time i think it would be an a if you yeah. if this didn't have a global requirement um, i don't know if i'd go that far like there there is a lot to like about this card i think it's i think it is worth the negative one point generally like the, the like the, what it gains you is generally worth a negative one point. But yes, okay, so it's 6% oxygen. What part of the game does that place you in? I would say mid to late game. I agree. Um, so in mid to late game, does, does hurt the plant production? That kind of hurts. It's not that bad. It would be a lot worse, like you said, if it was at the beginning. The power... I don't know, like, I feel like power is always kind of useful, you know, so I, I think it's still pretty good mid-game. Yeah, I don't, and, I don't and, think it's that good mid-game because by mid-game, you, you usually have figured out your power problems. Like, you, you've, you've figured something out. Not always, and sometimes I will play this card, like, if you have capital or something and you just need a way to get it down. But, but where the power is really, really critical is it's more in, in the early part. Like, imagine you have you know, like building industries or like one of these cards that, that is really good if you have a cheap power early, this card would be insane. But by the by yeah. the mid game, you're just, you don't need it anymore. Yeah, I, I think I mostly agree. Like I, I think the power is more useful early on, but I still think it's really useful in the mid game. Like I, I can think of lots of times where we've played and, trying to get like a city down mid game or even late game. So I, I think it's still okay then. Um, so by like, the mid game, I'm just so powerful Nima that I don't even, uh -huh. you know, I just don't need yeah. any more power. I just, it's just like coursing <laughs> through my body. 
Yeah, you can you can shoot lightning at your butt. <laughs> and I often do. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of all orifices. So like here's the interesting thing though, man. Like we're we're talking about this card and we're saying like it's generally okay, but I, I've never played this card. Well, it's the global requirement. I think I, with that global requirement, I think this is just a D. I, I, it, you rarely play it. By the time that you are going to play it, um, the negative one point is more relevant. You just, it's just the build, you know, because the other thing is like cheap building tags are just generically good because it gets you to builder. But by the time that you can play this card, builder is done. That's so, right. Right. So like this card in my mind is just a D. Um, it, it I think that everything that's on the card is actually quite good, except for that global requirement just completely nerfs it. Yeah, I, I'm going F plus. I, don't, I think this card's terrible. Dude, F plus. Look at you, man. Why do you always <laughs> Why do you always give a plus? Just like you just feel bad about it. Just give it. <laughs> well, a I don't know. Like, like it. There. Yeah. I mean, there are some positives to it. Like, but like. Every, the like you said, the requirement, the global requirement just completely ruins it right yeah i agree so um, yeah i'm i'm sticking with my f plus so jbox uh jbox asks what oxygen requirement would 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 it have to be to make it playable i would probably say minimum two percent and it would yeah i i'm there would definitely be times when i would play it if it were at two percent for for sure i i would say like probably three yeah, I mean, maybe three, although even even in that case, it would be extremely situational based on what had happened. Um, also, I think it would be so annoying to be Ecoline if, um, right. if somebody had this early like that. That has like kind of shades of Asteroid Mining Consortium with Saturn yep. Systems, you know, so whatever. I mean, it's, it's a D, I, I, and I'm cool good giving it an F too. Like whatever, dude, F. Um, F it. All right, um, let's go on to the next one here. Birds. All right, birds. All right, that's a fun card. So birds cost 10. Uh, it requires 13% oxygen. Obviously, it's got an animal tag, so it's a blue card. It's an action card. Uh, once per generation, you can add an animal to the card. Also, when you play, you can decrease some, anyone's plant production by 2 and then the card is worth one victory point for every every bird on it at the end of the game. Yeah, Take bird, it away, Nate. So birds, um, this is sort of in a in a little um, uh, you know a group of cards that uh, are similar. Uh, livestock and fish are the other ones. Um, yeah. They all are essentially allow you to put uh, an action per generation to put one one animal on the card to score points. These cards are quite good. Um, you know, the ratio here of one point per animal on the card is very strong. And there are a number of cards that um, let you put more animals onto a, onto another card. So they, they're good combinations with that, like uh, large large convoy and stuff like that. Yep. Um, the, 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 the issue with this is that you want to see where the oxygen and heat trackers are in the game when you consider getting this. Um, in, in general, you can tell which one of those is going to be going up more quickly, and then you know you, you want to pick the the animal card that corresponds to the track that's going to be unlocking quickly. So, if it's a game where people are you know putting a bunch of plants down and somebody's got like a steelworks or something, and the auction's going up very quickly, well then you should definitely grab birds. It's going to be great. Yeah. Um, whereas I think that usually it's the heat that goes up first, and so fish is probably better. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, the 13% oxygen typically makes this a very late game card. Um, it's, it's, I would say, like, three quarters of the games I've ever seen played or played myself, the oxygen is the last thing to go. Would you agree with that? I do. Yeah, I agree. That's usually the last one. Yeah. So that your analysis is right. It's like uh, fish is a lot better for that purpose. I will say the, the minus two plant production, This, I mean... That is pretty devastating, but given that you're not going to, I don't know, that's not going to have a big effect given the 13% oxygen, just like everything else. So like, you're probably going to get on average maybe like two points out of this card just by itself. 
I think. Like if it, unless you you know you have the convoys or something, but it's on worth, its own, yeah. Yeah, it's worth also noting that um, all of these animal cards combo unbelievably well with viral enhancers, and we'll we'll get to that card obviously later. But um, if you have viral enhancers, all of these cards go up in value. Not only because viral enhancers will give you another point on it when you play it, which already makes it better. But because you start to get these like snowball effects with plants and animal tags where you can just score a, an insane number of points uh, as they sort of synergize together. And so if you have viral enhancers, all of these cards get much, much better. Right. I, I, I think birds is just a, a solid B. Um, I mean, it's, it's basically... Um, it does it does occasionally have the the effect where you you just don't play it because the oxygen didn't go up the right way or whatever but i mean it's just it's just a very solid card it's cheap um even if there aren't a lot of synergies with it if you score you know two points off it for 13 credits which is you know 10 plus the, buying the card that's already like decent like it's just this average use case in a game is a couple points it's pretty good um i think it's a b Okay, um, I'm going C with it. I think this is. It's not. It's not the worst animal card. It may, it's maybe like the second or third worst one. Um, um, amongst like the the late game animal cards, I think it is kind of the worst one. Like I would take livestock or fish over this. I, I like. I just don't think you play it that much unless you've got convoy yeah i mean um I, that's a fair point um you know dumpster just mentions that dude like the first letter of the card is b i mean like <laughs> obviously i mean this is the sort of anal oh, wow. analysis that people come to our channel to get <laughs> so all the c cards we're gonna give c's and then <laughs> What um, happens after we get to G cards? What can what can we grade those? I, I can respect I can respect C. I don't I don't, I, you know I, I think it's a B, but like whatever. I, That's fine. Yeah, I don't have to agree. You know, I mean, okay, fine. Let's you can, not. You agree. can be wrong. It's it's totally cool. agree to disagree, Nima. <laughs> okay, All let's right. move on here. All right, man. Your favorite your Ooh. favorite card of the game, Black Polar Dust. Yeah, this this should be fun. Uh, black Polar Dust just costs 15, no other requirements, no tags on Black Polar Dust. Okay, so you, when you play it, you must decrease your Mega Credit production by 2, and then you get to increase your Heat production by 3, and then place an Ocean Tile. Okay, Nate, what do you think of Black Polar Dust? Yeah, this card sucks. I mean, <laughs> I, I, it's, it's funny, like, why does this card even exist? Like... <laughs> well, it's it's so bad. Like, why doesn't it have a tag on it? Yeah, right. Like, it's it's not that cheap either. Like, I so I think we have oh, we have discovered the one instance where this card is playable, right? And I think it's when you're a UNMI. Um, what and the reason we say that is because as UNMI, you want cheap and quick ways to get terraforming points so this immediately gets you the ocean down which lets you bump you know use your ability and then it gives you a lot of heat actually so that's the cheapest way to uh bump your tr in in the game uh, you know your the the heat production is so that's really the only time because the minus two mega credits is just devastating well that's the thing like so so in the example that you gave Nima, which I, I don't disagree with your analysis, but like, let's say you play this on turn one, okay? Uh -huh. That means that it, the card basically effectively cost you 35 credits. Right. I mean... That's like, insane, but like, I, I think like as UNMI, it's going to get you a lot of points. That's yeah, the only time. I mean, so here's the thing. So like, okay, let's say, let's say you play this. I mean, this card just like bad every part of the game okay so late game it's just over oh, yeah. right and usually the oceans are down anyway so like it sucks in late game 
In the mid game, you don't want to play this card because it's just too expensive. There's other ocean cards that are cheaper. And at that point in the middle game, the heat boost is like, okay, but it's not amazing. And then early game, it just nerfs your economy. Like, it, it's just, why does this card exist, Black Polar <laughs> Dust? Why do you exist? Like, like if they were going to make it an early game card, fine. But, like, put some tags on it. Like, make it hit some plants. Like, have it, have it do something that makes it good in the early game. Like, it just, it just costs 35 credits for an ocean and some heat. I mean, it's like, come yeah. on, man. Like, this, I don't know. I, I mean, it is highly, highly situational. And yeah, I, I mean, I think this is one of the worst cards in the game for sure. Like, impossibly the worst. Um, Dumpster is asking about what about with Helion? What right. So you... okay. So and and when I first saw this card, I was like, oh, it's a Helion card, you know. And then I thought about it, and I was like, okay, so it costs you eighteen. You play an Ocean Tile, and you get a plus one to your economy. Like, okay. I mean, that's it's it's like meh, you know. Like, it's okay. I mean. If if you get some value off the ocean placement, then it's it's okay. But you you would much rather with Helion play something else. Um, yeah. You know because there are other cards that are much cheaper that give you a boost of three to your heat that don't nerf your your credit production. Right. I, yeah. So I, I would say with Helion, it's no longer the worst card in the game. It's just really <laughs> bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, it's it's all it gets you almost nothing, and like you yeah, like you say, you're basically playing an ocean for fifteen. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I think this card, I just don't really understand why this card exists. Like I keep coming back to that, but I think that there was you know if you play this game a lot, you start to sense this internal logic that the that the creators of the game had for you know how many credits or how, yeah. how much should something cost and. Most of the cards make sense, and, and you understand, like, okay, like, some are a little more efficient than others, and, like, that's how every card game is, right? But then this one just seems um, like an aberration. Like, it seems a few standard deviations away from the mean. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, why not throw a science tag on it and call it, you know, Arctic Engineering or something, or, you know, like, whatever. <laughs> uh, I, like, if, if it had a little bit more, it might get into the place where you'd want to play it occasionally but it's just the way it is now it just seems ah bleh. hate it yeah. i hate it f f f f, <laughs> f as, give as, it as, as nemo would say f plus <laughs> no this is like f minus man what is terrible. what is an f plus anyway nemo <laughs> it's like okay you know for example if i if i gave something like a a, a d plus it might have like okay it's it is rarely played but maybe it doesn't have a high setup cost you know what i mean so so an f plus is like almost but sometimes never played <laughs> is that is yeah, that where you're getting it okay it's, I, I don't know it, it's it's uh it's not great but whatever all so right. f's from both of us all right next one here we go building, building industries. industries um okay. Man, who you took wanna... the who took the photo of that card? <laughs> <laughs> you want to you want to take this one? Yeah. So building industries. This is uh, six credits. It has a steel tag, um, a building tag. Sorry, and it costs you one energy when you play it, but it gives you a bump of two to your steel production. Yeah, this card is okay. I think. Um, the reason I think it's okay is because the the energy cost is that's kind of rough. Um, like I I do think it's probably worth it, especially if you're mining guild or, um, well yeah really kind of just mining guild. But um, so so like let's let's see here like if what 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 is the the power cost of this increase the the cost of the card by you know so like at worst it's a standard project right which i, I forget how much the power standard project it's 11. Is. so that's right thank you so at worst this is a 17 cost card so two steel production for 17 is terrible right well um, at worst it's 20 cost right because you got to buy the card too oh thank you yes that's true 
So 20 costs for two steel, that's going to take you 10, 10 gen, the entire game to recoup it. So that's terrible. Not really, because um, I mean, you're getting plus four to your credits, right, for the steel. So well, yeah, that's true. Not not, not plus two. Plus yeah, you'd be basically. I mean, so five turns. Yeah. yeah, five turns. My bad. So I don't know. Yeah, that, that that makes it kind of okay in my eyes. Um, that said, there is a building tag on it, which is quite nice. So I don't know. I, I I've been talking a lot. What do you think? No, I think I think building industries is great. I'm I'm surprised that you're so down on it. You just don't like building stuff. You're more of a destroyer. <laughs> well, I, I'm kind of talking myself through it. I'm I'm sort of like grading it as we go along. So yeah, yeah. No, I got you. No, I, and I think there there are a lot of cards like that where you kind of like at first blush you're kind of like oh yeah that's not that good. But I actually think building industry is quite good. Um, you know, so number one is it's a cheap building tag, and um, I as I've played more. Um, builder is a very good milestone to go for. Um, yeah, it's a powerful milestone because it usually in in pursuit of it you play a bunch of good cards, right? Mm. So in in the same way that science uh, sort of snowballs into something that's greater than its parts, uh, the building milestone has a similar quality where um, in order to pursue it, you end up playing some good building tags, and they they often end up having sort of being better than you think. Um, but this card is also has some very good combo potential. Um, you know, like if you get advanced alloys or something like that, um, suddenly this card's giving you a boost of six. Um, I, this card's quite powerful, and 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 there's a lot cheaper ways to get this online than a standard project energy. So. You know, I take you back to the card that we were discussing before. Um, imagine if biomass combustors was had no global requirement. That costs four. You get two power from it. You would like play that and then play building industries yeah. on the same. You, you'd be like, you know, a quarter of the way to the builder milestone and you just got a huge boost to your economy. Um, but there are a lot of other cards that give you cheap power and that combo with building industries. So, I mean, if you said, okay, you're going to spend nine credits to buy this card and then let's say you spend seven credits on power um because there's lots of cards that get you power for seven um that that card's quite good on the first three turns i mean th this card's pretty good yeah I, I i'm coming around on it like you're you're right like it, there there are a lot of cards that give you power um and it's, it's so it's not that hard to get that that one power there so and yeah uh, like a lot of people are pointing out the cheap building tag and that there's it's so true like there's so many times where you just want to you're racing towards builder and something like this would be amazing because it's 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 a good card i mean it is worth noting that both steel and titanium suffer a little bit from the specificity of the requirement on how it's used and i think that this gets overlooked a lot which is that um, credits are by far the best. Uh, you boosting your credit production gives you the most flexibility. You can use those yeah. credits to fund milestones and to play standard projects. And um, it's not it's it's not as though you can just say, oh, two steel productions worth four credits, and it's it's a pair, it's a one to one parity. It's not as good. It's not as good to have your your money in steel. The earlier that you get your steel online, though, the better because you will eventually find steel cards. Um, that doesn't oh, yeah. that doesn't always happen with titanium. I mean, if right. you overboost your titanium, you can get stranded at the end playing some fairly marginal space cards. But usually, you can find out outlets for the steel steel cards. Right, especially since the big space cards often get hacked. So yeah, I agree. There's so many more building tags, uh, building cards to put out than there are space cards. I think I think Builder man uh, starts with the B. I think it's a B. Yep, I've come around. I think it's a B. Okay. I agree. Well, it was um, it was a cathartic journey for you, Nima. Yeah, it was. There was highs. There was lows. <laughs> we you, we laughed. We cried. <laughs> I feel like you need to smoke a cigarette or something. Are you? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need a Valium and a cigarette. <laughs> All right, I'm proud of you, man. We came a long way on that card. <laughs> Yeah. All right, man. This is a big one. You ready for this next one? I don't know. I mean, it's become almost, um, almost uh, like a like a like a channel trademark. Oh yeah. Ah, okay. 
Bushes. All right. Yeah. So we first thing we know about bushes is that everyone loves them. <laughs> everyone loves them. But but it costs ten to get it down. Uh, it requires minus ten on the temperature scale. Um, there is a plant tag on it. Uh, it gives you two plant production and two plants, period. Yeah, so does this deserve the praise we give it, Nate? Uh, bushes. Um, bushes are great. I, I think that, um, or bushes is great, I guess would be the <laughs> cor- correct way to say it. That would be right, English. The... Um, <laughs> Uh, the alternate art version is even better, but uh, this card's quite good. I mean, basically, um, you know, it's a plant tag, which is which is solid, and getting two uh, plant production and two plants, uh, very very good, very efficient. And you know, uh, we talked about ad- uh, um, adapted lichen earlier on, and we were pretty mediocre on that card. Adapted lichen costs nine, mm-hmm. but I mean, look at look at adapted lichen, which. Boost your plant production by one does not have any other benefit. Compare that to bushes. I mean, bushes just blows it out of the water. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, bushes is very, very solid card. And I think the the funny thing about the plant strategy, and we, we've talked, we've kind of hinted at this, but I don't think we've we've made it so explicit, is that, um, it ironically the plant strategy is best developed in the mid game. You would think that they've planted mm. enough, um, or they've seeded. I'm going with a lot of um, agricultural metaphors here. <laughs> they've, yeah, I like they, it. They, you would think that they would have seeded enough cheap, good cards for plant production early to make plants good as an early strategy, but but in fact, no, because if you spend your money on plant production early, it's at the expense of your economy. And so what almost invariably happens is that you you do get a plant or two out of that early plant production that you put your money into, but then someone like Credit Core, who built a crazy economy in the early game, is just like, oh, that's cute. I'll just play <laughs> you know, bushes and some of these other higher efficiency plant cards, and then suddenly they're, they have better plant production than the person who spent their, their money on plants early. So it, it's I think that what this really points to is that the early plant cards are overcosted. that they they were too conservative with the early plant cards they could have made those considerably cheaper and and it would have made plant production a more viable early game strategy but in, right. instead i think it's just not th- 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 those are very good points nate and I, I do you know what it's making me think is this game needed another um pro- what is it protected habitats yeah it needed another way to protect plants, and maybe maybe it was a more expensive way. But like early game plants, it's just so devastating because of that. Like it's too easy to lose them. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, like you know, what would have been cool as a as a card would have been like um, like a game design would have been something that's early game that has an individual protected habs. So like it's mm. like it's a card that boosts your plant production, but every turn it puts a couple plants onto that card, like a uh, like a blue icon, and that yeah. card has protection from plants. Oh, I like that. You know what I mean? So like you can't protect all your plants, but you can protect a subset. And that and if they if the like some of the earlier game cards had that, then then you you wouldn't be so vulnerable in the early game. Yeah, yeah, that's good too. Yeah, but like you're you're right, like. The, late mid to late plants is just as good if not better than early plants so yeah that makes this card really really good yeah i mean it, it's a, it's a very good card um i i think i mean basically bushes is a b man i mean it's it's a good card and i mean the other thing too is that it has a lot of value synergizing with um uh viral enhancers just like all these cards do and with like um some of the other plant engine cards, uh, like um, uh, ecological zone and stuff like that, like Bush is just really good. It's it's a good card. Would you would you would you say Bushes is like a must play if you're doing plants? Um, I I actually think there are very few must play cards in in plant strategy because um, even though Bushes is very good, 
it's somewhat interchangeable with a lot of other plant cards. So uh, bushes is def definitely one of the best of them, but there are enough of them that are just slightly worse that you don't have to play this card ever. I, I you know, like like if this were in a in a pack with something that was more unique, I, I wouldn't feel bad taking that other card. But this card is good. Yeah. Like I don't know. I was I was thinking what I was thinking it was like, is this card an A? And I, and I don't think it is. Like it's not game breaking. Um how I I would rarely pass this card, however. Yeah, uh, I definitely don't think it's an A. I mean, it's just not the the effect is powerful, but it's not it's it's not game breaking, and and you do end up passing this card a fair amount. Yeah, fair enough. I, yeah, so I, I agree with the B. I think that's pretty solid grade for this B for bushes. You're gonna give this the B, giving it the B. All right, dude. All right, this is an interesting card. This next one, I'm I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this one. All right. Business Network. Okay. All right, Business Network. So this is a four-cost card. It uh, has an Earth tag on it, and it's a blue card, which means that you can you can activate it once per generation, and the action is look at the top card and buy it or discard it. And when you play this card, it, it gives a minus one to your uh, credit production. Yeah. Um, first response here is this card's okay. Um it's very cheap to get out, except for that production decrease. This that solidly makes this a mid-game card to me. Um, you know, if you played it turn one, for example, that basically is costing. You know, it's going to cost you what fourteen in the long, well seventeen plus buying it. So, and then on top of that, you get to look at the cards and you still have to pay for them. So uh, this feels like a, a good card for the person who's hunting for Jovians, for example. Or you maybe you really want uh, that fifth science tag to get Mask Inverter down or something. Um, I don't think this is the card that you get just for generic card draw. I think it, there's too many downsides. So I, I go back and forth on this card. I think this card's very complicated. Um, essentially, I agree with, with almost everything you said. I, I think this card on its face, assuming no other synergies, is actually very close to being really good. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, the number of cards that you see uh, off of this over the, over the course of a game is, is quite a few. And seeing a lot of cards is very, very good. Um, right. It, it is expensive to play it on turn one. And so some of what goes into my decision on whether or not I play this card is what my starting corporation was. So mm -hmm. if, if it's a corporation that starts with a lot of money, I'm much more likely to play this card. So like if I'm starting off with Teractor, which obviously also gets the reduction right. of cost. But if you're playing Credit Core, or you, even if you're playing something like Cinematics, um, which has a lot of money in Steel, I would still consider playing this. If you're playing, um, uh, yeah, like like Tharsis, like I would consider playing this. Like you get a lot of you get the the uh, a lot of starting money effectively with Tharsis. Like if you have a little money to spare, I mean, Business Network just it does it, it generally unlocks some value for you, but. If you're playing a corporation like Mining Guild or something where you're pretty cramped, uh, crimped or a little bit on your starting cash, like this can just just put you too far back. Yeah, those those are those are good synergies. I think the best synergies are with, for example, Cartel. So like, Cartel gives you one mega credit production for every uh, Earth tag. So even by itself, that immediately pays for this card, right? Um, and typically, you're going to have more than one Earth tag if you're going to play that card. It, it itself has an Earth tag, actually. So, um, so yeah, if you have like the or like Earth Office, something like that. If you have the if you have the Earth Synergy cards, which there aren't many of them, but that makes this card a lot better. Yeah, I think I think I totally agree with you that it doesn't take much to make this card really good. And yeah. what you're getting at is any any little price reduction. 
you know, like let's say you've already played Earth Catapult, or let's say you get this late game and you have some cost reduction cards with like Anti Grab, or let's say you have Earth Office, or you're planning to play Cartel, or I mean, like there's almost any number of of cards that combo with this that give you just a little bit more value. And if you get just a little bit more value with this card, you're quite happy to play it. And right. or or the other one is if you draw it and you don't have to pay for it. Like I, like almost any any way that you get a little more value out of this, you're quite happy to play it. So I I think Business Network is is a C plus. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like I could see also B minus. I mean, card draw in this game is very very powerful because so many of the cards are situational and synergistic that that you really just need a critical mass of certain types of cards to really unlock some powerful plays. And Business Network is is often the sort of the glue that holds that all together. Um, right. But it's it's a complicated one. I, I think C plus is where I where I end up with it. That I was thinking the exact same thing. Um, another important thing to to think about with card draw is it it's not only good for the cards that you want to see, but it's also good for just getting rid of cards. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if you were if you're playing Saturn Systems or something, and they're they're trying to build up Jovians, there's a chance you could just burn a Jovian. You know what I mean? Completely. So, that's that's another important thing to remember about card draw in this game. Yeah, the other thing, uh, a corollary to that, Nima, and that's so true what you just said, but the other corollary to that is that you just have hidden information. You have information yeah, right. that other people don't have, which is that yep. you know that you put anti-grab on the bottom. You know that you put research on the bottom. You know, So like when it comes to fighting for scientists, um, you, know, yep. you, you already have the information that you're not going to lose scientists to research at the end if if you put that card on the bottom. So, I even it is definitely good even if you discard the card, you now know what that card was. It it's it's value. Right. Yeah, that's a very good point. So, yeah, the the fact that you still have to buy the card it, you know, it's lessened for that fact. So, yeah, I I'm still I'm still giving this a C plus given just mostly because of that minus 1 credit production. Yeah, I guess final final thing I would say is that all of these card draw uh, uh, cards are good if you're trying to get planner. So um, a, a play that has come up multiple times in the games that we've posted on YouTube is that you're in a corporation that doesn't have like a natural, um, a real natural milestone, and you kind of end up with around ten cards or something like that, and you're just like. Whoa! Wait, I can just buy four cards next generation, and I'm I'm basically gonna get planner, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So these cards that let you buy additional cards, um, they they actually are deceptively good for planner because it gives you more control over when when you go for that play, um, and that's a minor point, but because milestones are so important, no, uh, it comes up more than you think. That's a good point. Sure. All right, so we're both C plus on this one. C plus. All right. All right, man. You ready for this next one? I am ready. This is where you. This is where I was born and where you live, dude. No, oh, I know it. Oh, I. Th- <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say mangrove, but no. dude, I wouldn't say that you live in a mangrove, dude. <laughs> yes, but, you would. Yeah, I would probably. Although, <laughs> let, you know, you would. Other people that you live with might not appreciate that. No, they might not. Okay, so Callisto Penal Mines cost 24. There is a Jovian tag and a space tag on it. It gives you three mega credit production and is worth two points. Also, the art on this one is cool. Yeah, for once. I, yeah, I know. Like, usually I don't, I'm not like, um, I'm usually being a little tongue in cheek with it, but this this is like cool. It's got like, they're on Callisto. They're checking out Jupiter, and there's like these weird Aurora stuff like happening around it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and then and then there's dudes with guns and a <laughs> uh, someone with the bad hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of looks like that. Anyway, what do you think, man? Um, okay, Callisto Penal Mines. Um, so uh, I think that this card is quite good. Um, I you know it's like I think about how we kicked this program off with Beam. From a thorium asteroid think about how much better callisto penal mines is on turn one okay so this card gives you a jupiter tag and it bumps your credit production by three it's cheaper considerably cheaper than beam and it gives you two points 
Yeah. I mean, this card's just it's it's good. I mean, um, twenty four credits is still expensive, so it's not like it's not like you're getting crazy good value out of this, but um, you get two points on it. Like those two points are at the end of the game. You know, we've talked about this before, but each of those uh, points is probably worth a, a, a eight credits or so. Is is kind of where I end up with it. You know, it's probably around eight credits. So if this if you imagine this card, you know, is cost eight eight credits, no points on it, boost of three, and you get a Jupiter tag and a space tag, like that's pretty good. Um, like you can see their internal logic here. Like compare this card to um, uh, what's that card? Uh, Acquired Company, right? Acquired Company costs ten credits and boosts your economy by three. It doesn't have any points on it. I mean, this one basically is like better than Acquired Company. I don't know. It's just, it's a good. I think it's a good card. I, I'm not articulating very well why I think it's good, but no, I like. Yeah, I, I hear you. Like the. the what it gets you is like it's it's worth it for what it gets you like it's not overpriced um and and i would agree with that like this card's like not it's certainly not an a to me like it's not a game breaking card it's not that great honestly because like it i will say it is good it's not great because the production like the the economy on it it takes the entire game to pay itself off no, you, you're but, you're you're right with that, Nima. Like, I I mean, this card is best in the middle game, right? This is this is like one of those cards that's actually really good on turn four. Like, um, imagine you're playing Saturn Systems and you you spent the first couple turns bumping your Titanium production a little bit and playing some other cheaper economy cards, and you've got like four Titanium sitting in your in your um in your board. And you you jump out and play this on turn four, it's quite good in that setting. You get two points yeah. back, you get a bump of three to your economy, which is still going to be good over the rest of the game, and you get like a bump if you're playing Saturn Systems to your economy again. So I, this is like the it's too, a little too expensive to be great early. It's not great early, but it's it's very good in the middle game. Well, I th I, I I would uh, amend that by saying not necessarily middle game middle game but with titanium right like because i don't think it's any it's i think it's really terrible mid game if you're just paying for it right well, it's not terrible but like it's considerably less no you're yeah. right it's definitely much better if you have a little bit of titanium because this is a great titanium sink yeah exactly. it, it basically converts titanium into credits on the front end and the back end right like yeah, i mean it's it's points yeah um so I, I think you're, you're definitely right. Um, the other thing that's worth noting about Callisto Penal Mines is that this card can just be like ridiculously cheap in the late game. Like if you've got um, a bunch yeah. of, if you got a bunch of space discount cards going, you can sometimes play this card for like 12 or something. I mean, you know, then at that point you're just getting insane value. Yeah, I agree. And it can also kind of back end you into banker a little bit too. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, I think overall this is a it's a good card. I I, I agree with your points. I think this is um, it's it's C plus B minus territory for me. Yeah, I, I go B minus on it. Like I I, I do think it usually gets played. Um, I, I think it, it it basically is C plus in most situations, and then it's B minus when you're if you're Saturn Systems, it's a B minus, right? You get you get additional value on it. Uh, Saturn Systems, I think this is really good. Yeah, <laughs> like right. this it's, is almost it's a must play if you're Saturn. Yeah, it's Systems. a it's a definitely it's definitely even better. For I guess I guess if you're, if you yeah, I think it's mostly C plus. But if you have anything else that synergizes with it, it's it's a little better. Yeah, that's that's fine. B minus or C plus, I'm fine with either of those. That's expert analysis. If you have something that makes it better, it's better. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. Better is better, everyone. This is uh, CFM top analysis. <laughs> All right, you ready for the next one here? Let's do it. Okay, um, here we go. Capital. Capital. Um, okay. Capital. What is what does that do, Nima? All right. Capital costs twenty six credits. It requires four oceans to be played. It's of course a city, so there's a city tag and a building tag. Uh, costs. You have to decrease your power production by two. 
you increase your mega credit production by five, and then you get to place the the special capital tile down. And the reason that's is that's interesting is because the capital is worth one point for every ocean that surrounds it. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a big card. Like, what do you think about it? Uh, yeah, I think capital is awesome. I mm-hmm. I think it's a great card. Um, it's you know it's um, it's really powerful. And and one thing that isn't you know I mean it's obvious but not that obvious is that you get you often get six credits back when you play it because you're usually playing this against three ocean tiles. Right. Um, and you know the it, it is a little bit of a hit to your power and often. Often that will come up because two power is a lot, and so you know you can have this card kind of sitting in your hand. You're waiting for that cheap power card to kind of activate this, um, but but it just scores a lot of points. It's efficient. I mean, just putting a tile on the board is good. Having a city is good, and the boost of five to your economy is is r- yeah. really good. It's huge. Oh my god, like that. It, that that plus five, I, it makes it so that you often play this the capital out when even when there's not necessarily the oceans to give the points out, right? So like I, I've seen I've seen capital played lots of times when there's maybe like one ocean next to it with the, you know with the hopes of placing more later. But yeah, I think this is a really solid card. Um, four oceans makes it early to mid game. I would say probably more mid game, but sometimes early. Yeah, I think it's usually a mid game, and I, I find that one thing that's a little bit of a knock against it is that, you know, having a building tag and placing a city tile, you would think would make it very good for milestones, but the four ocean requirement puts it in most cases just out of range to being relevant for those milestones. So um, that's not always true. I mean, you're right. Sometimes you know, sometimes the game starts with. Uh, ice asteroid and something else and you know all of a sudden there's a bunch of oceans down but i i find that when you look at the ocean requirement and the energy requirement of this card it usually it usually puts it just out of reach to be relevant for those milestones and that does make it quite a bit worse i i find that i often play this card around gen six or seven um and at that point i'm really just trying to convert money into points um and this is just an efficient way to do so at that point sure yeah i agree uh, that's just a really solid card yeah another thing that uh comes up and we we haven't had a lot of um of city cards yet and things like that but there there is sort of like a sub game in terraforming mars about controlling territory on the board and um any card that lets you play a city tile uh you know or anything that lets you play a tile to the board it it does have added value because you have this like area control effect imagine for example the most common places that that people play cities early is near noctis city or on the on the far uh east side of the board um where those plants are around all the oceans if you're able to play a capital, you can kind of play it near those other tiles to prevent people from building, you know, um, real efficient city grids into those other directions, you know? So, like, a single mm-hmm. well-placed tile can actually be very effective at, at hampering somebody else's board control strategy. And capital is great in that respect because hmm. it kind of comes down, it, it like it scores enough points that it's good on its face it it you know it's unexpected it can like be good in an area of the board that doesn't have a lot of other things because there's just some ocean sitting out there usually on that northern part of the board um i don't know i I think capital is quite good i i don't i'm trying to get to where you're to what you're talking about there like as far as blocking ground strategy i don't know like capital is typically restricted it's not literally restricted, but it's more restricted as far as where you want to place it. There's there's maybe like three places on the map where capital really works, right? There's a lower right, there's a top right, and kind of the middle, just above the river in the middle. Well, that assumes that you're going for the full three points, but um, the way the capital usually plays out is that you're happy to place it next to two oceans, 
And often you place it next to somebody else's greenery. I mean, and and that's where it's just like, and if you if you expand your your placement opportunities to include those, there, there's quite a few more places on the board where it gets played. I guess I, I don't know. I, I'm not so sure if if I don't think this is like anywhere near the card you'd want to 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 do a blocking strategy with, though. Personally, I think there's much better cards for that. Yeah, that's true. But I, I what I guess I'm saying is that like it's not. There's no card that is dedicated to blocking. I mean, they should have some of those. Like, well, no, there like, is. Um, um, what is it? Uh, the reserve, reserving the, the that reserve tile yeah, spot. Yeah, no, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. And there's like industrial zone and some other kinds of yeah, things. Right. Um, but but what I mean though is that like I don't think that you gener it's like. It's not that that's a, a fundamental part of this card. It's just that it's a little more value on it. And, and okay, when you start to add up all of the incremental value on capital, it ends up being a lot. So you get a big boost to your economy. You get a city tile on the board. You get some points from oceans and you get money back from them. You pick up yeah. some plants that are next to the oceans. You control some space. You take a point off your off the other person's plant. Like, I you know, like, it it's just a it's a it's a very powerful card. I, I think capital is a, a solid B. Um, you know, it, it's a solid B even despite having a two power requirement and a global requirement that that makes it yeah. somewhat tricky. It, it's that's how good this card is. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a B plus. I think this card gets played every time, the, every game, uh, and it's just good basically any time of and any stage of the game i think that's a good i could idea. see b plus too the the other thing about capital is that it, it is insanely good when you have a bunch of steel lying around you know like how i was saying how sometimes you don't have targets for your steel and this yeah. is just like the card that you're praying for because it's it's like it's expensive so you it lets you convert a big chunk of steel into something that's very very useful so yeah, um sure. You know, I think it's it's just great. Yeah, dumpster. I think when we say B, mostly it means that it's gonna it's gonna be played most of the time that it's drawn. It does not need to be played by you, but by yeah. somebody. I agree. Cool. You want to do one more card? I think we got one more, dude. Okay. Um. All right, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna end this one with a doozy. Ooh. You ready? Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Amazing carbonate <laughs> processing. All right. Um, I don't know. The, the, I, I am interested to talk about this. Okay, so carbonate processing costs six. It's got a building tag. And you decrease your power production by one to increase your heat production by three. Um, I don't know. Like, on the surface, it sucks, but I'm, I'm second guessing it now. What do you think? <laughs> that's that's amazing analysis <laughs> um, i'm not saying i'm done with the no analysis. i know but it's just there's the way you said that you're it's just funny but um i so when i first started playing i thought carbonate processing was just like insanely good you know like i it just seems like it's really good i mean it's pretty cheap and yeah it's a boost of three but i kind of agree with you like lately i do not play this card quite as much and and part of it is just that um if you're if you're driving hard towards economy early, you don't necessarily want cards that terraform or like engine terraforming cards because it'll end the game faster. This is this is a weird and kind of subtle point, but um, let's say you put all your money into terraforming stuff like this early, you get the payoff for these later because they happen over time. Right, like the your first bump off of this card to TR is on Gen three or four. It's on four, um, so that means that you've spent money early for a delayed payoff, and and then it bumped the TR, which hastens the end of the game. In general, what I like to do is is spend money on cards that boost your economy early. Then in the middle game, you have a lot of money and you assess the board and then you decide if you want to end the game early or if you want this to be a long game. Mm -hmm. And if it's a long game, you're going to keep putting money into economy and to things that 
that generate points for you, but don't terraform as much. So there's plenty of times when, you know, like if I'm playing a long game that I'm I'm going to I'm going to ship giant ice asteroid. Like I'm not going to play that card because it might actually end the game an entire generation earlier were I to play it than if I played, you know, something else. I mean, um, sometimes you want that though, right? Well, that's right. And so the flex that's why it's better to wait to play those cards until you know if you want that effect or not. And carbonate processing is a card that's best that, that you're better off playing early, but it 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 restricts you a little bit on that decision making process. So because if you play this card, you're going to bump the heat twice, right? Like that's what you're going to do with this card if you play it on turn one. But you may not want to bump the heat twice. You may not want to spend your money on bumping the heat twice if you knew that's what it was going to do when you played it on turn one. Like it's it's a complicated argument I'm making. Yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. I I don't know that that feels like a little bit of a trap though, man. Like because I, I could see a situation where you're you're trying to do that analysis in your head. You're staring at this card and you're like, okay where is this going to get me as far as when the game ends? And you can just paralyze yourself trying to think like through that, right? Well, what I mean though is like, say you're looking at carbonate processing or titanium mine. Which one are you going to play? Titanium mine costs seven and it boosts your titanium by one. It's turn one. You're holding yeah. both of those cards in hand. Which one are you going to play? I mean, definitely titanium. And I, I think that the point you're making there as far as boost your economy earlier, like your money and your minerals early rather than this is very good. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, think about it. If you if you do titanium mine, you very well may use all that titanium to play Demos down and bump the heat three times. It's it's the same thing yeah. as carbonate processing, effectively. But the difference is that the titanium that you the uh, economy that you build uh, gives you the flexibility to decide if you want to bump the TR. So if you're in the middle game and you decide you want to go for a long game, you might use that titanium to play, um, you know, like. Callisto Penal Mine or something like that, or you know something that generates you points but doesn't do TR. Yeah. So like the titanium just gives you more flexibility. Carbonate process processing is is it's making a committal decision early before you know if you want to do that. No, f fair enough. Like I, I I don't know. I think a little bit of heat production either way is not going to really swing it that much. Yeah, but it's all it all adds up. Sure, it does. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, here's so, the thing, dude. I've lived my whole life trying not to make any commitments, <laughs> and it's Sweet. worked out very, very well. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, all right, non non-committal. So, like, would would you say the same thing about um, Soletta, for example? Yeah, Soletta's just too expensive. The the one card that I think that it's in this category that I think is pretty good is Mohol Area. And the reason is that Mohol Area played early also gives you the tile bonus. So yeah. that that's pretty good. And having tiles on the board is good. Although Mohol and Carbonate Processing are somewhat similar. But if, you know, like this having the energy requirement and not having a tile makes it makes it worse. And I think Mohol having a tile and not having the energy requirement and boosting your heat by one more makes it makes it a worthwhile turn one play. I would play Mohol on turn one. Carbonate processing, I would also play carbonate processing if I didn't have anything better to do and I had cheap energy, but I, I wouldn't love it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I agree there. It's I've I one thing we're not talking about that we should is it's a cheap building tag. That's true. It is a cheap building tag, although it, it's less cheap than it looks because of the energy. Correct. I think I think carbonate processing is a D plus C minus. I would give it a C minus. I think. I think it, it it's probably a little bit better than the way I play it, but it's I think it's C minus. Yeah, I was going straight C. I I thought I was thinking D for a little bit there, but I, I think I don't know. It doesn't feel like a D to me. Like I. <laughs> can't give it the d do you have a lot of experience <laughs> <laughs> feeling d's oh man <laughs> what does a d feel thank like? you everyone good night <laughs> what does the d feel like Nima? 
I, I would have to ask you that, man. I think you... <laughs> <laughs> all right well on that note on that note um i think that concludes our episode today uh, Nima, as always it was great fun yep um you want to do the sign off sure yeah thanks everyone for watching uh follow us on youtube and twitch uh twitter at cardboard mars i try to update that as best i can um but yeah um hope you like this one feel free to join us for the next time um and uh, until then, keep terraforming. All right, catch you guys later.